Uh, okay, well, thanks everyone. Thanks to Rigetti for this uh, great event. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, Okay, sorry, one second while I learn how to use the, the pointer. Uh, so uh, I'm a PhD student at Michigan State University and I'm going to talk about some work uh, that came out of myself and co-authors at Los Alamos National Lab uh, about uh, solving linear systems of equations. Uh, so to motivate this, the problem of solving a linear system of equations is a very standard computational benchmark um, and it has a lot of applications across uh, many areas of science, uh, engineering, and technology. So we do have quantum algorithms for solving linear systems of equations, famously the HHL algorithm, which is now over a decade old, um, and also recently some other approaches, such as this one based on singular value estimation um, or decomposition. And these algorithms are nice in that they have uh, nice scaling, uh, something like logarithmic in the size of the linear system, uh, but they have very, very high overhead, which makes it uh, nearly impossible, impossible to implement uh, on our near-term computers and challenging to implement um, in the far term even. So just to give you some idea for a four by four linear system, both of these algorithms were implemented in um, IBM software, Qiskit, Aqua. Um, and you can see for this uh, system, it's something like tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of gates, um, even for this four by four linear system. So you could ask, uh, can we hope to do anything useful in the near term? Um, and that's where VQLS comes in. So the way VQLS works is that we assume uh, you give as inputs the matrix uh, as a linear combination of unitaries and also a unitary U which prepares the B vector from the ground state. And then once you have this, you proceed in the standard way for variational algorithms in that you have a quantum computer which evaluates some cost function um, that's shown here. And then you have a classical optimization routine which adjusts the parameters and attempts to minimize the cost. The output of this is an optimal set of parameters that allows you to prepare a quantum state which is proportional to the solution of the linear system. So there's a few things I want to highlight from the paper. First, one thing we show is that computing the cost function, we propose multiple cost functions and we show that computing them is uh, DQC1 hard. For our purposes, that means that it's hard to do this classically, so we have motivation that you want to do it on a quantum computer. And we also look at some heuristic scaling results. Again, nothing, um, no rigorous proofs or anything, but for particular linear systems, we look at how the scaling goes in the condition number of the input linear uh, system, the matrix of the linear system, and also the desired precision of the solution. The vertical axis here is on a uh, log scale, and so the important thing to note is that the, this line is sublinear, which means that things aren't blowing up too bad. Um, and this time to solution is sort of the number of times you need to run VQLS in order to uh, solve, the, solve the linear system. So to run this on hardware, in the paper we ran this and got some results on Rigetti uh, Aspen 4 lattices. We use something that we call the effective Hamiltonian approach, which is this Hamiltonian that we form from the input uh, matrix and vector B. So this, I won't explain too much, but if you stare at it, you can convince yourself that if I right multiply this by the solution of the linear system, then uh, the vector x, that will be an eigenvalue, uh, eigenvector with eigenvalue zero. Uh, and you can show that that's the unique uh, uh, vector that satisfies that. So there's a unique ground state of the solution, and by minimizing the expectation, uh, we're able to find that. This is uh, some, some data that we have from the paper. Um, which shows that uh, on five different runs, starting at different angles, we're able to optimize this um, and solve this particular linear system, which I'll explain more in uh, a slide or two. So I, I want to highlight some results that I took over the past month on Rigetti's new Aspen 7 uh, chip. And there's five experiments that I ran. In the interest of time, I'll only present the last three. Um, so starting at, um, oops, starting at, three, four, and five here. So we're going to look at the cost landscape uh, for an ansatz with no entanglement for a five qubit linear system, the same one that we look at in the paper. Uh, we're then going to add some entanglement to the ansatz and look at how we can do the optimization. And then we're going to look at a different linear system formed from the icing model 
um, on eight to 10 qubits and show that we're able to solve that linear system um, for, for those numbers of qubits. So this is the three qubit examples, which I'll skip. Um, and then starting at the five qubit uh, example, this is the linear system here. It's somewhat arbitrary, but you have to pick something. There's a reason we picked this. Uh, an important reason is that we know a priori that the solution can be re represented by a product state ansatz of Y rotations on um, each qubit. So this can be uh, implemented easily on hardware. It's a depth one circuit, so that's nice. And the experiment that we're, I'm doing here on Aspen 7 is uh, taking this ansatz, having each angle be the same in the rotation and sweeping that from minus pi to pi over all the values and looking at the cost landscape that you see on the QPU versus that on the noiseless simulator. So this is a good thing to do whenever you're running variational algorithms, just to see uh, what the landscape looks like and if you're able to optimize. And here you can see that it, it matches fairly well. There's this vertical shift, but the sort of shape and structure of the cost landscape is the same, which allows you to do the optimization. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, this is pretty good data, and this is all just raw data. We're not doing any mitigation or um, uh, anything like that. This is straight from the QPU. The error bars you see are from different runs um, at different times. And the next experiment is, is we can do the same thing and just, just look at optimizing this. So the cost starts out low because we start at a good set of angles that we found from doing the parameter sweep, and this is just showing trying to minimize it more. Uh, and this shows a little bit more the vertical shift that you see uh, on the previous slide, on the previous graph. But here, um, I want to emphasize that the shape is the same by if you just simply subtract a constant value just by eyeballing it, you can see that it matches the green curve very well, which is the QVM data. So again, you, you have this sort of noise shift, but the structure of the landscape is the same, which allows you to do the optimization. The next thing we can do is we can take the ansatz and add some entangling gates to it um, here. Um, so we start with the layer of Y rotations and then we're going to add nearest neighbor CZs um, and put a layer of Z rotations in the middle. The reason to do this is that for uh, the angle of the Z rotation set to zero, this collapses to the previous ansatz and you can still obtain the same solution. And we can look at the data obtained from this and the, as expected, the vertical shift here is higher, uh, but you still obtain some features of the shape of the landscape, um, and you can do the optimization. Um, so now uh, I'll talk about the last linear system and the last experiments that we ran. So for this, we're going to use this matrix formed from the icing model. And you might ask why we would do this. This seems like a sort of very condensed matter theorist approach to solving linear systems. The reason is that for uh, small coupling coefficients j, uh, we know that the solution can be represented by a matrix product state, uh, which means for us that on hardware it's viable to implement. And I want to show just an example of the linear system here for three qubits, so, so an eight by eight matrix. And it's somewhat nice in that you can't just look at this and solve it by eye in a second. You know, it's, there's something sort of non-trivial going on here in that sense. Um, so we can run this uh, here for eight qubits. Uh, so this is a 256 by 256 linear system, a particular instance of the problem, uh, of course. And what you're seeing here, the black curve on this plot on the right is the noiseless QVM data. And each of the colored curves is one particular run on the QPU, and you can see that it matches quite nicely, and you're able to optimize and solve this linear system. This plot here is showing a sort of finish optimization about the optimal parameter found there, and you're able to minimize the cost a little bit more. I'll skip this slide. This is just showing that the parameters are essentially the same. Um, so again, the structure of the landscape is uh, essentially the same as in the noiseless case. And we're able to bump this up to 10 qubits as well and you could probably do more. So this was uh, sort of all the time and credits that I had uh, to do, but you could easily, as I'll mention on the next slide, scale this up, at least for this linear system, for this matrix product state to larger qubits. Um, so just to conclude very briefly, uh, we showed that for these product state ansatzes, you can um, uh, up to 10 qubits, uh, get pretty good results on the Aspen 7 chips. Um, as an outlook on VQLS, the bottleneck, as with all variational algorithms, is just how hard it is to prepare the, uh, the solution. 
so if you have a, a, a deep ansatz, that uh, makes it harder on hardware. Um, as I mentioned, VQLs can likely scale up to even hundreds of qubits in the very new term. We do it in the paper on the simulator um, uh, for, for this particular example. But it's important, uh, a caveat to note, that for the general linear system, again, your ansatz may not be this simple to, to represent. So you have this sort of problem-specific complexity uh, that appears. And although uh, there might be many terms in the Hamiltonian, um, there's this sort of difference between doing this problem with a linear system versus something in quantum chemistry, such as like a Hamiltonian, which has nice physical properties like locality and things like that. For the general linear system, you might not have that, so there may be many terms. Uh, but we're able to somewhat get around that, especially uh, e even in these experiments, by truncating terms and using simultaneous measurements. Uh, so there's some hope there. For future applications, again, these are just uh, a bunch of examples of where linear systems come into play. Take your pick. Um, with VQLS, we can pot potentially solve these large linear systems, so maybe brag about the size, but at the caveat that the complexity is, is going to be a little bit problem specific. Um, and there's all these um, caveats that you have to be aware of and take into account. And this, this could be a path towards uh, advantage, maybe, um, as long as even with all these points, it's still hard to do classically. So these might be two strict assumptions, such that uh, classical computers are able to do it efficiently. And for example, for matrix product states, we know that that can be simulated efficiently. Um, but th there might be uh, this, this intermediate zone where for particular linear systems, you can solve them um, with, with some advantage, maybe on a quantum computer, using this type of variational approach. Um, so I just want to thank all my co-authors on the VQLS paper, um, all the guys from LANL, um, Carlos, uh, who's also a PhD student at the University of Barcelona, uh, Marco, Yeet, Wukash, and Patrick, and thanks to Rigetti uh, for Quantum Cloud Services, and especially in particular for Tom Lubeau for, for help with running these experiments. Here's some references. Uh, the archive link to the paper is down here. And I just wanted to mention that all my code for getting these results is, is on my GitHub. So if you're interested, you can check that out as well. And thank you. <laughs>